Hi, for this video, what I want to do is talk to you about correlation and the correlation coefficient. And I am going to throw a disclaimer out there that the definition of correlation is different in different textbooks. So make sure that you do look at your textbook accordingly and make sure that you look at how it is used in your textbook. Okay, technically correlation is how linearly related two variables are, but oftentimes textbooks will just talk about it as any type of association between two variables. Okay, so do look carefully at your textbook and decide whether you should use correlation for all types of relationships or only if a linear relationship exists. I do keep that in mind when I am teaching this because of the fact that there is a lot of controversy and different textbooks do explain things differently. So getting that out of the way, let's look at some of the important characteristics of correlation and the correlation coefficient. I will not be doing any calculations in this video. It's more of just an explanation as to what they are and to kind of give you a background of what they do and how you will use them in your courses. Okay, so correlation will be used for bivariate data, and bivariate data is represented by ordered pairs like x comma y, where x is the explanatory variable. So again, there's controversy in textbooks. Most stack statistics textbooks use the word explanatory for the x. If you are in an algebra class or using some statistics textbooks, they will call x the independent variable. And y is going to be the response or the dependent variable. Okay, so one of the examples that I always like to give in my classes is if you think about your tank of gas in your car. When you first go to the gas station and you fill up your gas tank, your gas tank is full. Well, as you start to drive, your gas tank does decrease or, or the amount of gas in your gas tank does decrease over time okay and really the miles is the explanatory so it explains how much gas you have in your gas tank it's not the only variable that does influence the miles is not the only variable that influences the amount of gas in your gas tank there are other things like where you're driving um, how quick you are when the light turns green, whether you're going fast or slow. So there's a lot of things that explain the amount of gas in your gas tank, but miles is one of the things that would help to explain how much you have. So the explanatory is the independent variable. That's the one that can change. And Y is going to be your response or your dependent variable. And that's going to be the amount after you've plugged X into your equation. So in a scatter plot, we always put X on the horizontal axis and Y always goes on the vertical axis. Um, so I've drawn out here some different correlations that you might see. A negative linear correlation always goes down from left to right. And you can see that overall a, um, a linear model would be appropriate for this data set. So when you're looking to see, should I... Um, use a linear model, you're looking to see would a line appropriately model the overall data trend. It doesn't have to go exactly through all of the points and there are times that when you do draw a line of best fit, which I'll talk about in another video, that the line of best fit won't actually pass through any of the given points. So that is something to keep in mind, but this would have a negative linear correlation. And in all textbooks, correlation would be an appropriate term to use in this one because of the fact that a linear model is appropriate. A positive linear correlation goes up from left to right. Um, as your X values increase, your Y values also increase. And so again, correlation is used in all textbooks to describe this because it's going up from left to right and a linear model is appropriate. For a model like this, you can see that there is a strong pattern, but the pattern in this is definitely not linear. So 
In some textbooks, they will say that this is a nonlinear association or a nonlinear relationship. In other textbooks, they will use the word correlation with this, even though technically correlation is how linear things are. Um, so with this, anytime you see a pattern where a line is not appropriate, it's going to be either nonlinear correlation or you could say a nonlinear association. There's definitely a model that could be fit to this. So like if I were working in a setting and I saw a pattern like this, I would apply a quadratic regression model to this. Again, we're not going into any calculations, but because it has the shape of a parabola or a quadratic model, you would use that kind of relationship. So the scatter plots are important for helping you to determine what kind of relationship you're going to use, whether a linear model is appropriate or whether a nonlinear model is appropriate. Okay, you may also look for things like this where there is no correlation, like you cannot see any type of association whatsoever with this. Um, the no correlation or no association goes that there is no pattern whatsoever. So there is a difference between a nonlinear versus no correlation because no correlation means that there's no pattern whatsoever. A nonlinear means that there's a pattern. It's just not a line that would be appropriate. It's really important to understand that correlation does not equal causation. Just because there is a relationship between the two variables, it does not mean that one causes the other. The only way that you can prove causation is through a randomized controlled experiment. So just because there's a relationship between the two does not mean that one causes the other. There are other variables that could be impacting um, the outcome, just like in the, in the explanation that I had talked about earlier with the gas tank, the number of miles driven is not the only variable that impacts your amount of gas in your gas tank. There's other things that influence it. So always keep in mind that correlation does not equal causation. Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to talk about this in this video is the correlation coefficient. So the correlation coefficient is actually a numerical value that tells you the strength and the direction of a linear relationship between two variables. That's why technically correlation goes with linear models because you have an assigned value. If you run a regression equation, they're not going to give you an R value. Um, if you run a cubic regression, they're not going to give you an R value. The correlation coefficient is reserved solely for linear models. And that's why it's best to talk more about when it's a nonlinear relationship um, using the word association instead of using the word correlation. Okay. Um, we use R to represent the sample correlation. If you are in an advanced stats class, you're probably not watching this video, but in an advanced stats class, you would use rho to represent the population correlation coefficient, uh, but that's not necessary for this course that I am teaching right now. So um, that's why I'm only talking about R. So the formula used for the correlation coefficient is this formula right here. It is something that is very complicated and you do have a lot of room for error if you try to do the calculations by hand. I recommend using technology to calculate it. Uh, I do have videos that show how to find it in the TI-84 graphing calculator, in the TI-Inspire graphing calculator, and also in Excel. So all of this can be done with technology very, very quickly. This formula is one of those formulas that is very scary in statistics. And you can even use spreadsheets to help you go through and build this because it will save you time over doing the hand calculations. But let me just kind of talk to you about what this formula says, because if you break it down, it's really not that bad. Again, it's very time consuming. Okay, so to find the correlation coefficient, if you're doing it by hand, you have to take each of your X values and your Y values and multiply them together. So if you had 20 points, you would have to take your first X and multiply it by your first Y, and your second X and multiply it by your second Y, and your third by your third, and continue on all the way down until you got to your last term, and you would find the product of your X and your Y coordinates. 
Then you would have to find the sum. Remember that this symbol right here is sigma and it always means the sum. So you have to find the sum of your products of your x and y coordinates times the number where n represents the number of coordinates that you had. So if you had 20 coordinates, you would plug in a 20 for n. Okay. From there, you would have to find the sum of your x values. So I would add up all of my x values. I would find the sum of all of my y values, and I would put those sums into the equation and find the product. Okay. In the denominator, you would again use n, where n is the number of values that you have. You would have to square all of your x coordinates and then find the sum of your x values squared. This one here is different than this formula because this part is saying that I'm going to take each individual x value, I'm going to square it, then I'm going to find the sum of those squares. Where this one is saying I first add up all the values, I use the same value that I have up here, and then I square that value. So that would be in here, and you do have to make sure that that is under the square root. And then you would do the same thing for your y. So you would have to square each of your y terms, then find the sum of your squares of y times the number of terms minus the sum of your y coordinates squared. And you have to make sure that when you're plugging this into your calculator that at any time you do not miss a parenthesis, you do not round. And so that's why it's way more efficient to use technology because your technology will give you this in a matter of seconds where to do hand calculations, depending upon how many variables you have, this could take you a very long time. It's important to understand and see the formulas because you don't appreciate technology nearly enough without being able to see what it is actually doing. Okay, so when you're calculating this, you will always get a value that ranges from negative one to positive one, where negative one represents perfect negative correlation and positive one represents perfect positive correlation. Okay, with perfect negative correlation, that means that every single point falls on the line. Um, it just tells you that your values, so for perfect negative correlation, every point would fall on the same line and it goes down from left to right. With perfect positive correlation, that tells you that your values go up from left to right and all of your points fall on the same line. Okay, no correlation would be you just have random scatter, okay? Um, you cannot look at the correlation coefficient alone to determine how linear the relationship is. It is very important that you also look at the scatter plot because if you were to only look at R, this one would have a correlation coefficient very close to one. And so you would think that it's a strong positive correlation, but then when you look at it, you can actually see that an exponential model is a better model for this one. And you would not use a line to represent this because of the obvious curve, okay? So this would be a nonlinear association or a nonlinear correlation but your correlation coefficient is very close to one. This one, the correlation coefficient is very close to zero, which means according to just the correlation coefficient that there is no correlation, but we talked about before that this is a strong relationship. This is definitely a quadratic model. And so this is a strong nonlinear association, but your correlation coefficient is going to be close to zero. So it's very, very important when you are dealing with this that you do look at both the scatter plot and the correlation coefficient because you cannot just look at the correlation coefficient and say, yes, it's definitely linear or no, it's definitely not linear because you can have relationships like this. Okay, um, just to kind of help you a little bit when you're dealing with this. If you get a correlation coefficient, um, so if you get a correlation coefficient that is positive one, that means that it's a perfect positive correlation. Okay. Um, if you get something that ranges from 0.8 to 0.99, 
this would be a strong positive correlation. And models that have a correlation coefficient that you've verified that a linear model is appropriate, that it does go up. Um, so something that would be strong would be like this. That would be a strong positive correlation. Um, if it goes from 0.8 to 0.99, then that is going to be a strong positive. If it's 0.6 to 0.79, this would be a moderate positive. Anything from 0.4 to 0.59 would be a weak positive relationship. Um, anything really below 0.4 is going to be extremely weak, and you really wouldn't trust the models for that. So the correlation coefficient can help you determine how strong your model is and whether you should be looking at the predictions more accurately or not. Um, the stronger the correlation coefficient is, the more accurate your model is going to be at predicting. The weaker it is, the less accurate your model is going to be. Okay, so if your correlation coefficient is negative, remember that negative one means that it's just perfect negative correlation. That means that it goes down from left to right. Um, if it's negative 0.8, to negative 0.99, that's a strong negative correlation. Okay, so just because it's negative, all that is telling us is that my scatter plot goes down from left to right. So as my x values are increasing, my y values are decreasing. The closer that it is to negative 1, the stronger the negative relationship is going to be. And anything from negative 0.6 to negative 0.79 would be a moderate pos sorry, moderate negative correlation. Okay, um, and then negative 0.4 to negative 0.59 would be a weak negative correlation. Okay. So again, I just wanted to go through and kind of give you background on what is correlation, what the correlation coefficient does, and how they are related to each other. Anytime you are dealing with correlation or correlation coefficients, it's very, very important to look at the scatter plot to make sure that a linear model is appropriate. If a linear model is not appropriate, then you would not apply the correlation coefficient to it. And so it's very, very important that you always look at your scatter plot before dealing with anything. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.